makinig manood na sa Teleradyo. Teleradyo, Teleradyo Marcelo. Sa gitna ng mapanubok na panahon, magkahatid sa gagakibat ay diskusyon. Sama-sama tayo, kahit magkalayo. Sa programang ito, tiyak ang pagkatuto. Teleradyo, Teleradyo Marcelo, Teleradyo, Teleradyo Marcelo, Teleradyo, Teleradyo Marcelo. Makinig, manood na sa teleradyo Makinig, manood na sa teleradyo Teleradyo, teleradyo Marcelo Sa gitna ng mapanubok na panahon Magkahatid sa gagakibat ay diskusyon Sama-sama tayo kahit magkalayo sa programang ito, tiyak ang pagkatuto. Teleradyo, Teleradyo Marcelo, Teleradyo, Teleradyo Marcelo, Teleradyo, Teleradyo Marcelo. Welcome learners, you are listening to Teleradio Marcelo, ang telearalan ng bawat malulenyo. Brought to you by Marcelo H. Del Pilar National High School. I am Teacher Tony Rose, your Sci Educator for today. Last week, we learned about the basic of motion. Mom Lu discussed with you the differences and similarities between distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. Let's do a quick review to check if you still remember. Comment your answer down below. Don't forget to include your section and the name of your science teacher for bonus points on your performance grade. Your comments are welcome. Remember, this is just a recitation on air. <coughs> Here are five real-life situations. Let's see if you can identify which scenario demonstrates speed, velocity, and acceleration. Have your pens and paper ready too. Let's start. Number one, the motorbike slows down at the stop sign. Is this a situation that shows speed, velocity, or acceleration? Write down your answer in your science notebook. Number two, a snail crawls two meters in two hours. There is a distance and time given. Number three, the bird flies south at 15 meters per second. Direction is given in this statement. Number four, a train increased its speed as it left the station. So there is a change in speed. What do you think? Is it speed, velocity, or acceleration? And finally, a boat travels north towards China at 10 meters per second. So I will give you 10 more seconds to review your answer. All right. So let us check your answers okay the correct answer are of the following number one we have acceleration number two speed 
Number three, velocity. And number four, acceleration. Well, on number five, the answer is velocity. Did you get all the correct answers? Great. So it's a good thing that you still remember the basic concept of motion. Because today, we will be learning further about motion using visual representations such as tape charts and motion graphs. Our learning objective is to create and interpret visual representation of the motion of object such as tape charts and motion graphs. At the end of the broadcast, you should be able to analyze an example of motion, understand motion, and describe motion using tape charts, diagram, and position time graph. Many of the things around us move. Motion, therefore, is the process of moving an object from one place to another. It can be described in many ways, either by using words, diagrams, numerical information, and even through an equation. This is a ticker tape timer. A common way to analyze the motion of object is through the use of a ticker tape diagram or simply known as tape chart, which is produced by a ticker tape timer. A moving body, travel, distance, and time of motion can be recorded by this machine. How does it work? So the ticker tape timer is made up of a carbon disc, a clapper, and a roll of paper tape is fed through it. When the object you are trying to observe moves, it pulls the paper tape with it. Once you switch the timer on, the clapper move up and down repeatedly and strike the carbon disc. The traces of the dots in the tape chart provides a history of the motion of an object. Thus, it can represent the motion of an object. But what does the line of dots mean on the tape? A large distance between the dot means the object was moving fast during a time interval, while a small distance between the dots indicates that the object moves slowly during the time interval. When the distance between the dots gets shorter or is decreasing steadily, the object in motion is slowing down or decelerate. When but when the distance between the dots gets longer, or is increasingly steadily, the object in motion is accelerating. How about on this example of the dots on a tape chart? An equal distance between the dots indicates a constant velocity. When an object is moving at a constant speed, there is no acceleration while a gradual change of the distance between the dots that gets smaller means the object is slowing down, which indicates that the object is decelerating. What if the distance between the dots gradually gets longer? It means the object is speeding up or accelerating. Thus, the increase in the distance between the dots can also indicate how much acceleration is happening. Like the last tape, 
where lots of acceleration is indicated or very fast motion. Let us see if we understood ticker tape charts. Let's study each tape chart and describe the motion it represents. Please take note that we are assuming that all, mar all marbles start from rest for all the following examples. Alright, let us have number one. What is the direction of the marble's movement? Is it accelerating, decelerating, or is it in constant motion? Okay, to describe the motion, the answer should be the marble moves with a constant velocity to the right. Okay, now let us do number two. How are we going to describe the motion of the marble and the direction of the movement? Okay, just like just by looking at the diagram, our answer should be the marble is moving to the right when uh, to the right and then it stops for a few seconds. Then finally accelerates quickly to the right. Lastly, number three. Let's describe the motion by looking at the dots and the distance between it. So, in this example, the distance between the dot is gradually becoming smaller. Take note of the direction the marble is traveling to. So, the answer is the marble decelerates to the left. Okay? So if, if your answer is said to be correct, just like what I have discussed, good job, Del Pilarian. Okay. Now let us try to analyze motion through the use of a diagram. Take a look at the picture of the boy. Take note of the distance he had covered and the time it takes him to cover its distance. Let us say... A boy is walking at a speed of 1 meter per second. What is the initial position of the boy? Just by looking at the diagram. Right. His initial position is at 0 meter or 0. Next, what is his final position? Correct. Again, his final position is at 4 meter. For question number 3, what is his position after 2 seconds? After 2 seconds or 2 seconds, his position is at the 2 meter mark. For question number 4, at what time is the position of the boy equal to 3 meter? So yes, it is 3 second mark. And lastly, at what time will the boy reach the 4 meter position? So he will reach the 4 meter position at the 4 second mark. So when we are looking at the diagram to describe the boy's motion, the basic question to ask is, where is the boy? The answer to this question requires that you specify the position of the boy. Therefore, position is defined as the location of an object at a given moment in time. So when the boy is in motion and we want to describe the position of the boy, we want to find out where the boy is at a particular time. So the question is, was the boy changing his speed while walking? And the answer would be no. He is constantly moving with the same speed 
towards the east or going to the right. Now, if we are going to present the information or data into a table, list down first the position or distance covered starting with 0 meter, 1 meter, 2 meter, 3 meter, and 4 meter. Next, how many seconds did the boy take to get to each of the position? At 0 meter, the time was 0 second or 0. At 1 meter, it took him 1 second and so on and so forth. If we are able to analyze the data, we can say that the distance covered by the boy increases constantly with time. So the boy moves with a constant speed. But if we are going to present the same data in a position time graph, we have to take note which will be plotted in the x and the y axis. Since speed is graphed as a change in distance over time, time is the independent variable and will be your x-axis, while distance is the dependent variable or will be your y-axis. So what does our position time graph shows? The position time graph shows a straight diagonal line, which means that the motion of the boy is said to be constant, rightward or in a positive, and the speed is equivalent to 1 meter per second. This graph also shows the following, that the slope of the position time graph represents the velocity of the object. The straight line indicates constant slope, so the velocity is also constant. The velocity is constant because the speed is constant and the direction of the motion does not change. So what is a slope and why is it important? A slope is the steepness of the line and is equal to the rise over run. It also reveals useful information about the velocity of the object. The slope of the line on a distance time graph is equal to the speed of the object. A steeper line indicates that the object moves a greater distance in a given time. The steeper the line, the faster the object moves. So in this slide, each line on a graph tells a story about the object's motion. A horizontal line indicates that the object is not moving. The time increases, but the distance covered remains the same. The line that curves upward indicates that the speed of the object increases since the line is getting steeper. So, the speed of the object is not constant and the object is accelerating. The same is true for its opposite. A line that curves downward means the object is decelerating and the speed is decreasing. So let us test your understanding by analyzing or analyzing the following position time graph. Have your pens and paper ready. Okay. The graph below represent your journey to school from your home. What you're going to do is to choose the letter that best represent the question. Number one. Let's start. Number one. Which point on the graph indicates that you are at rest? Is it A, B, C, or D? And the answer is letter 
B. Where the line is horizontal and a horizontal or flat line means the object is at rest or has stopped. The time is increasing but the distance being covered remains the same. So yes, the correct answer is letter B. Question number two. Which point on the graph has the greatest speed? Is it A, B, C, or D? And the correct answer is letter D. Again, the slope in D is the greatest and a steeper slope indicates that it has a greater speed. For question number three, which point on the graph indicates you are heading back home? Is it A, B, C, or D? And the answer is, you are correct, letter C, because it indicates a negative slope. Did you get all the correct answers? To our question okay so let us pause for a break and when we come back we will do some sit work to test your understanding so i have here an infomercial about the announcement poll for our grade 7 special program in science technology and engineering so there is a grade requirement and schedule of online registration that can be seen on your, that is being flashed on your screen. Uh, an on-site registration on April 5, 2, 30, 2021. Schedule of interview to be announced. So, um, this is uh, for the special program in Science, Technolo Technology, and Engineering or SPSTE. Okay. So, alright. So, we are back. You're still listening and tuned in to Teleradio Marcelo, ang telealaran ng bawat malalenyo. And I'm Sci Educator, Ma'am Tony Rose Torres. So keep listening, and we are almost at the end of the broadcast. So this time, we will, we will do a knowledge check. For uh, knowledge check, if you really, uh, some, if you really learn something, for what we have discussed today. Get your notebook again. Number it from 1 to 5. You only need to choose the best answer from the given choices in these exercises. So I will give you 10 seconds for each number. And this is number 1. Which graph shows that the object is getting faster or accelerating? Is it graph A, graph B, graph C, graph D, or graph letter E? Number two. Which graph shows that the object is slowing down or decelerating? Number three. Which graph shows an object is not moving. Exercise number four. Which graph shows an object moving at a constant speed back to its starting point? And the last number, exercise number 5, which graph shows an object moving at a constant speed? Alright, so, uh, so are you ready to check your answers? Let us see if we got the right answer. For number 1, for exercise number 1, the correct answer is, Letter D. The graph shows a curved line. 
uh, the graph shows a curved line upward and an increasing slope, meaning a positive acceleration. Number two. The answer is correct. Letter E. Letter E shows decelerating or slowing down. The graph in letter E is a curve becoming flatter, showing a negative acceleration with a decreasing slope. For number three, the correct answer is correct. Letter A. The object in graph A is not moving because the distance stays the same as time goes by. For number four, the answer is letter C. Correct. The final position is at zero meter and shows a negative slope. And lastly, number five. The answer is letter B. Because the graph in letter B shows an object that is moving at a constant speed over time. So if you got all correct answer, great job Del Pilarians. Now you know how to analyze now you know how to analyze motion graphs and to describe motion based on diagram or visual representation. To summarize what we have learned today, Again, a gradual change of the distance between dots in a thicker tape that gets smaller means the object is slowing down, which indicates that the object's motion is decelerating. Second, if the distance between the dots gradually gets longer, it means the object is speeding up or accelerating. In a ticker tape chart, can be converted into a motion graph. On a displacement time graph, the slope is equal to the velocity of the object and the slope of a straight line is said to be constant. A straight line naman denotes constant velocities, while a curved line has changing slope, which denotes acceleration. A positive slope indicates motion the, uh, in positive direction, while a negative slope indicates motion in the negative direction. While a zero slope implies a state of rest. The slope of the graph also determines how fast or how slow a motion is. How about a steeper slope? A steeper slope indicates a faster velocity, while a smaller slope indicates slower velocity. How about on a velocity time graph? Zero slope indicate that the motion is with constant velocity. A positive velocity or a positive slope indicates that there is an increase in velocity in a positive direction. How about a negative slope? It indicates an increase in velocity in a negative direction. Okay, so I hope Del Pilarians you have learned uh, from this um, at broadcast for the day. So, for your assignment, you are going to answer the following. Define waves and state the properties of wave. Number two, state and explain the different types of wave. And number three, how do waves carry energy from one place to another? That is all the time we have for now. I hope you have an amazing time learning with me today. Next week, we will be talk about waves. So let me end today's lesson with this beautiful quote. Keep going, keep reaching, and keep growing. By Leslie Cassidy. Work on those modules 
And remember, it doesn't matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. So keep learning and stay curious, Del Pilarian. Again, this is your Sci Educator, Mom Tony Rose Torres. This is Tele Radio Marcelo, ang tele aralan ng bawat malulenyo. Thank you for tuning in and see you again next week. Makinig manood na sa tele radio. Makinig manood na sa tele radio. Tele radio, tele radio Marcelo. Sa gitna ng mapanubok na panahon Magkahati sa gagakibat ay diskusyon Sama-sama tayo Kahit magkalayo Sa programang ito Tiyak ang pagkatuto Teleradyo Teleradyo Marcelo Teleradio, Teleradio Marcelo, Teleradio, Teleradio Marcelo.